Hi there, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Morgan. I'm from Organic Approach. Uh, founded the company a lot of years ago. Um, and we sent out a survey by email to our customer base, uh, I don't know, maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago. Uh, we got a lot of questions back, a lot of comments back. And uh, one of the questions was, can you enlighten us a little bit more on something uh, that we call competitive biological antagonism. It's something that I like a lot, uh, so it's probably a good idea that I explain it because usually when people call, uh, I get into this discussion in one way or another, especially if you're dealing with disease activity. So, uh, conventionally speaking, uh, three, four decades ago, uh, and still today, uh, fungicides are used to suppress disease pathogens. Um, but when you have disease pathogens, one of the reasons that they are taking off uh, and reaching epidemic population levels is because <clears throat> uh, there are no competitive biological antagonists. Uh, for example, organisms that would otherwise compete with disease pathogens because the way we do our uh, fertility practices, our fungicide practices, insecticide practices, et cetera, et cetera, by the way we do that, we, we kind of preclude or uh, erase the possibility for beneficial organisms to really thrive and multiply and populate uh, the plant tissue surfaces um, that we're trying to protect and grow and maintain. So this, this little chat right here is kind of directed uh, for the moment toward uh, the golf industry, um, but we could talk about uh, the same concept with regard to vegetable production, certified organic vegetable production, uh, conventional uh, vegetable production. Uh, we could go into a lot of uh, different fields, uh, but we're gonna focus on the golf industry to keep this simple. So for the moment, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss the fact that we wanna start working on choosing products that we apply so that we are basically setting the table, uh, the proverbial buffet table, if you will, with foods uh, that are going to be helpful to our beneficials to establish. Uh, but at the same time, if we are doing a really good job, we're gonna try to also choose products that are not helpful uh, to pathogen uh, growth and proliferation and, and establishment and expansion. Um, so but some of the products that we've learned, because we actually apply all these products, we manufacture these products, uh, except for the one in the middle here, this little one, um, we manufacture all these products. Uh, and we manufacture them because in the decades that I've been doing what I've been doing, I actually apply these products and I've tested them and I know when they work and when they don't work and how they work and why they work and all that sort of thing. So um, I've learned how to use them as tools in my toolbox, if you will. So my job is to try to coat the plants with biological food substrates that are attractive to beneficials and effectively starve out our pathogens as much as possible. So. Uh, one product is LC10 plus 7. This is a LC, stands for liquid concentrate, by the way. LC10, 10% soluble humate. 7 means the 7 primary plant micronutrients, which we have chelated using the uh, humic and fulvic acid molecules, which we extract here. So we uh, solubilize. Um, raw materials. Uh, we extract the humic and fulvic acid molecules out of these raw materials um, and uh, then we formulate, if you will, uh, micronutrients uh, into those solutions uh, and we create a product like LC10 plus 7 which has a lot of soluble humate. This product in general is called FAO plus 7 which simply means pure fulvic acid, uh, the O stands for organic, so FA for fulvic acid, O for organic, 7 again for the 7 primary plant micronutrients. Um, the micronutrients aren't at high levels, 
Uh, so it's not like you're going to create some massive change in your micronutrient levels on your soil test or your tissue analysis. Um, but these micronutrients do play a role in helping the plant to perform at optimal levels uh, because these are highly available forms of micronutrients. So we've also found through the use of these products ourselves and through the different types of people that we sell to throughout the country in agriculture and, and uh, viticulture, uh, meaning vineyards and orchards and beyond, that when we use these products, somehow we are getting some kind of a suppression of disease. Um, I'm not going to profess to know everything, but what I do know is there's a lot of truth to the fact that we are getting some disease suppression just from these products. Why do we have two? The fulvic acid is not so dark pigmented, so that doesn't stain uh, in really high profile situations. Um, golf turf is not that high, it's high profile, but you're not going to pick up the staining uh, and, and nor will the players pick up the, the staining. Um, but if you're treating, say, lettuce or something like that, and you're taking it to market, then you might see some black droplets on a head of lettuce, and that just isn't good at the market. Um, so, long story short, we've got the chelated micros, uh, the very complex humic and, humic and fulvic acid molecules. Uh, all of this is difficult for pathogens to assimilate. Um, and so we like to spray these because it also helps to uh, deter uh, pathogen establishment. So for some reason or another, again, disease uh, suppression uh, it is not a, a fungicide uh, in any case, but these are important products. Now, when we spray them, we want them to be able to stick. Uh, and if we can at the same time get some uh, soil penetrant qualities, uh, Yucca is a great product for the soil penetrant qualities and also acts as a really nice uh, spreader sticker. Ironically, this particular product does not do well to feed pathogens, so we've done the work with this and with these two products, that's why we use them in combination. At the same time, if you have the ability to sequester, uh, carbon sequester, um, excess nitrates that may be in the turf ecosystem where these diseases are trying to get hold. We all know as turf experts that um, disease pathogens like uh, nitrates uh, and, and soluble and highly available forms of nitrogen. Um, so what we do is we include this product as a biological food substrate. It's called LC12. LC again for liquid concentrate, 12 for 12% 12 minimum humic acid content. Um, this particular product does well in conjunction with these. Uh, when we tank mix them all together, we get even better results because what we're doing is we are sequestering the nitrates. When we sequester the nitrates and wrap them in a very, very large, complex uh, molecule like the humic acid molecule, it makes it difficult for pathogens to thrive and use these substrates uh, for the purpose of building their populations into an epidemic disease. Um, while we're at it, if we put in liquid seaweed concentrate, this is liquid seaweed concentrate, um, LSC if you will, nature's essence LSC. If we mix this in, now we've got some interesting plant growth hormones like auxins, gibberellins, and cytokinins. Uh, if we use it right in the right quantities at the right times of year, we can improve our root growth in the fall and we can better sustain the root growth that we have in the summer. So this is a, a real nice biological food substrate at the same time. Um, so this is straight fulvic acid, FAO is the name of this product. Uh, straight fulvic acid without the micronutrients like the FAO plus seven. Uh, the LC12 that I just spoke of is uh, basically the same as the LC10 plus 7, except this has the micronutrients and the LC12 does not have the chelates in it. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, this is called Growbiotics uh, SAI. SAI stands for Super Activated Inoculant. Um, this is a formula that we've been making for probably 15 years now. Um, and this particular biological consortium, if you will, 
um, does exceptionally well with all of these products that I've just been talking about. So this is kind of the, the, the biology that we want to support. There are other indigenous or native microbes in your turf eco ecosystem that you want to support. The way to support them is to feed them well, like you would want to feed your children when you're trying to raise them on healthy foods. It's the same concept. You wouldn't want to feed your kids donuts and uh, pizza all the time, uh, maybe occasionally, um, but not all the time. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that we raise our turf in a healthy fashion and we can actually do that very successfully which ironically if we do it well we will preclude the uh, population explosion of disease pathogens and we do it by feeding our good beneficial biology really well with well chosen intelligently chosen biological food substrates i.e. these products and here's a great biological consortium, again, Grobiotics SAI. This particular biological happens to like light. It's a UV loving biological consortium. So it does well in full light, where a lot of biologicals do not. They are sterilized in UV rays. So our objective is to, well, let's get to the point. So if we could do all of that uh, if, if we didn't have to make it so complicated and we could put all of this product into say one product to make life a bit easier um, in, the, in the words of Emeril Agassi uh, I want to say BAM we have influence and influence is the product that basically took us a long time to put together because uh, when we put influence together and I put that out front here for you when we put influence together uh, it did what it was supposed to. It acted like a biological food substrate, went a little crazy, fed the good microbes. The jug wanted to go bam and explode and grow. Uh, so we had to learn how to um, basically calm everything down until you take it, put it into your tank mix, and then it just kind of is like being a cat let out of the cage. It just Then it can go do its thing and it can go biological for you. Uh, in, in your greens and teas and fairways, wherever you choose to use it. By the way, you can also choose this around the club, use it around the clubhouse on all the ornamentals. Um, it will do a great job. Um, so basically, here are all your biological food substrates, but also in here, again, the uh, biological itself, the Grobiotics SAI. Um, so, you know, all, in, all of these first products I discussed, in one jug called influence. All we're trying to do is we're trying to grow out good biology for you. So biological competitive antagonism. We're trying to create good biology by giving it good food substrates so that those microbes that you're raising until it, you know, in, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Specifically, uh, you're making an effort to raise these particular uh, biological groups that you know are beneficial to you. You're doing it so that you can cover more of the leaf surface on your blade of grass, uh, more of the soil particle surfaces. Uh, you cover them, you coat them with higher numbers of beneficials. So there's simply not a lot of space left on the surface of the soil particle or on the leaf tissue. If there's not a lot of space left, then your, your uh, pathogens can't get extremely well established. Also, the biologicals that are beneficial will competitively compete with your pathogens, uh, not only for space, but for the food substrates. So that's a little bit as fast as I can on competitive biological antagonism, and uh, we'll probably get into it a little more deeply the next time. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.